syllabus i told this syllabus is very common to you it's very common sensical to you read the terms given in the syllabus there are two papers like in every optional there are two papers for upsc exam here also there are two papers one is paper 1 number 2 is paper 2 every optional paper 1 is theory paper 2 is application of the theory to what application of the theory to what theory to india right so like in every optional in sociology also paper 1 you have basic theories paper 2 you have application of the theories to indian society okay how many units you have in paper 1 in paper 1 you have 10 units just 10 units 10 units in paper 1 So, the first unit is modernity and emergence of sociology. You have to read in the first place about the emergence of the subject. How the subject emerged? That is very important or not? Like every person, you wanted to study a person like Gandhi, you wanted to study Mahatma Gandhi, you start with what? The date of birth of that particular Mahatma or not. So, that should be the study of emergence, whether it is great personality like Mahatma or great subject like sociology, we start with emergence, birth. So, the birth of sociology will be the first unit birth of sociology sociology is a consequence for a consequence there should be what cause so there will be a consequence if there is a consequence there is a cause Understanding this point or not? Consequence is the subject called a sociology. What is the cause? In the syllabus, they are giving cause is modernity. Cause is what? Modernity. Modernity where in India? Europe. Modernity in Europe is the cause of sociology. So, sociology was born where? The birthplace of sociology is not India. It is, according to syllabus, Europe. So, this subject is imported from Europe to India. We imported that subject. Therefore, in the first paper, we will study more of which thinkers, Indian thinkers or European thinkers, European thinkers. Can you tell the place of birth exactly, not just the continent, Europe, the place of birth? France, why? The person who coined the term sociology was born in France. The one who gave name to the subject should be called as what? Father of social. Okay. So, a French person, a French scholar, his name is Comte, C-O-M-T-E, Comte. He gave the name sociology, which is why he is called the father of sociology. So, he was born in France, Comte. Therefore, your birthplace is your father's birthplace. In the same way, sociology had its father called August Comte, who was born in France. 
so the birthplace of sociology is france from france it went to us then it went to different parts of europe then after traveling to different parts of europe it finally came to india by that time it was 20th century and the sociology was born in 19th century why <laughs> because in 19th century 1938 this person august kam gave the name sociology he was giving the name sociology in uh, you know 18s not 19 1830s 1838 1838 so therefore 19th century was the century of birth for sociology august comte was the father places france understood so this will be studied in the first unit how sociology was born now the second topic is in what way sociology is different from other social sciences relation between sociology and history relation between philosophy and sociology relation between sociology and psychology relation between sociology and anthropology between sociology and economics like that every subject is having a relationship with sociology therefore a student of every subject can study the sociology sociology is having its hand in every other subjects so any person who studied any subject in his ug or pg can study sociology with ease and next is your sociology and common sense in what way sociology and common sense are connected to each other common means people sense means what is sense do you have common sense people some people will ask do you have common sense i am taking class you are jumping in joy dancing in the class if somebody is dancing in the class now i am taking what is sociology common sense connection somebody started dancing in the class assume everybody will look at that person or not what is the thing which you are communicating through that looking at that person common sense you don't have common sense and sir is teaching sociology upsc ies labas na and all why are you dancing so we are supposed to do something in some places we are not supposed to do something in some other place you have to do something you don't to do. you don't have to do something so do's and don'ts in that particular place going to cinema theater ponin selvan 2 released for example there sitting in the front row you know when sociology was born you know who is the father of sociology they'll throw you out go get lost spoiling the cinema mood there are some places where you have to speak something there are some places where you should not speak something okay that is what is common sense so is sociology common sense yes or no some people will say yes some people will say no okay so that is what is the first unit called as sociology as a discipline now come to the second unit always this sociology or any other social science will have to answer this question are you a science who are you this question was asked to all humanities this question was asked to history this question was asked to economics this question was asked to anthropology this question was asked to even political science all social sciences will come to encounter a question who are you are you a science because science was having that much of status that time everybody appreciated science so every subject coming after science will be seen through the eyes of science yes or no science was so much appreciated why it was appreciated we'll take all these things in the classes science was appreciated now every subject coming after science will encounter this question are you a science some people say yes sociology is a science some people will say sociology is not a science one who say sociology is a science is positivist one who say sociology is not a science is who 
non positivist so a group of people who say sociology as a science is called as positivist and another group of people who say sociology is not a science they are called as non positivist that is the debate which we will be studying in the second unit the status of sociology is it a science who will say it is a science positivist who will say it is not a science last about one student was sir negativist if positivist says sociology is not a science negativist will have to say sociology is not a science there is no concept called negativist in sociology non positivist okay then research methods when we are doing research in sociology what methods and all we are using this is a topic which comes third so when sociology has to study society it has to use some methods to study society or not you have to have some methods to study society how to study society if i have to study a human being medically speaking i have some devices to medically study that human being what is the height of the person what is the weight of the person what is the um, blood pressure of the person what is the sugar content of the person what is the lipid profile of the person so there are many parameters with the help of which scientifically a human being can be studied sociologically how to study there should be some methodology that should be some you know uh, methods which you have to apply to study society so those things we'll discuss in the third unit how to study society there are some people who will say study society like science like science is studying something study society same as science so using scientific principles you study society somebody will say no 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 science studies fact but sociology studies human beings what is the difference between fact and human beings fact means it is not having mind this water bottle is it having mind so i can easily study this water bottle this is see 250 ml it is okay what are the contents present in the water bottle and what is the size of the water bottle what is the volume what is the uh, thickness of the plastic all these things i can study but can this technique be used to study me why you can't study me like a water bottle because i have mind my mind keeps changing like anything everybody in this preparation 7 o'clock they think this time i is proper i is not settling for any other job except i is and that to home cater i is 7 5 even prelims i will not clear then how ias ips simply you can dream of getting home cater of getting ias going to labasna will it work what is your record previous record in the school have you topped the exams in the college if i topped in the college why i will be sitting in the class now if i can't do well if i didn't do well in the school if i do if i didn't do well in the college will i be able to clear prelims with 12 lakh people are applying only 12000 people are clearing this confusion comes 7 10 don't worry in past you didn't study that is why you didn't get now studying 12 hours a day 13 hours a day during examination time 25 hours a day we can study don't worry we can get ias mood swings like anything or not because mind and that is the beauty of human being if we did not have that creative mind we would not have become wise we became wise humans because of this mind the beauty of mind it keeps changing like anything so i can't study mind like a water bottle i have to have different type of study the one who says i can study society like science they support qualitative they support quantitative methods the one who says sociology can study society like science is studying 
it is called as quantitative. One who says sociology is not a science, so we cannot have quantitative study, we can only have qualitative study. They are called as who? Quantitative methods will be proposed by whom? Second unit. Who will say quantitative methods? Who says sociology is a science? Who says? So, positivist. Who says qualitative? Ah. Over. See how it is having a very, very logical flow. Syllabus is wonderfully placed by UPS. What next? What next? Like a story. It's a storytelling exercise for teachers like me to make the subject to come closer to your mind. Next. This is the heart and soul. Heart. This is the heart and soul of sociology called as fourth unit thinkers. You complete this thinkers portion, sociology is over. 80 percentage of the questions you can write answers using this single unit called as fourth unit. And this is the most important advantage of sociology. You study one unit, 80 percentage of answers you will write. Suppose if you have a question for which you don't have an answer, you use the thinkers portion given from Marxian perspective, from Durkheimian perspective, from Parsonian perspective, from Merton's perspective, from Mead's perspective, from Weber's perspective, six, seven paragraphs will be there. So, this is like A plus B the whole square formula. Apply that formula to write answer for any question. So, this is the core sociology, heart and soul of sociology lies in the fourth unit. That is why we will spend more time on the fourth unit. Close to one month, we will study only fourth unit. Why? Because answer which you are going to write for the remaining questions, you will get points only from this fourth unit. And fifth unit is about social stratification. Society is having many layers. Society has many layers. What do you mean by layers? What do you mean by layers? One above the other. So you have caste system in India where in the top you have Brahmins, then you have Kshatriyas, then you have Vaishyas, then you have Shudras. If you go by status, prestige, you have caste system. If you go by wealth, you have class, rich, poor. If you go by gender, you have men, women. If you have to go by race, that is color difference, skill and color difference, white, black. So like that, every society is putting people in groups and arranging people in a hierarchical fashion. Arranging people in a hierarchical fashion. Some people will be called as the people at the top. Some people will be called as the people at the bottom. Some people will be called people belong to the middle stratum. So, how society is hierarchically organizing people? What is the basis of putting some people at the top, some people at the bottom, some people in the middle category? All these steps we will be studying in the fifth unit. Right? Have you heard about caste system? Have you heard about class? Have you heard about uh, ethnicity? What do you mean by ethnicity? I speak uh, language. For example, if you go to France, your French, a French man will tell, French language is superior than English language. If you come to Tamil Nadu, Tamil originated before rock came, before earth came. We have a pride, yes or no? If you go to some other uh, uh, language group, they will tell their language came first. Whether Sanskrit came first or Tamil came first or Telugu came first or Tulu language came first or Odisha language, Oriya language came, this is going to be a matter of debate. But 
telling people that if you speak a particular language you are inferior if you speak a particular language you are superior is there in every society so based on food you eat on auspicious days you should not eat non vegetarian food yes or no tomorrow you have to because tomorrow is what hmm today only we will search the friend happy ramzan happy ramzan kudupom yaarney theriyadave chumma adhe oru seat la edatha potu vechukkovume that type right we will think the school friends whether there some school friends college friends yaarney illa ottalo sikkal endra social uh, certain foods are not allowed certain foods are appreciated right so vegetarianism is always having its own that higher standing and politics is what if you eat beef you are low in the social ladder okay if you eat vegetarian you are high eating beef you are low eating chicken you are in the middle here there is a weight i eat chicken i eat Uh, you know uh, goat uh, but you eat beef you are inferior i am superior this politics are there and you will understand all these politics when you study this particular chapter okay now come to this uh, work and economic life very very important in fact in the fourth unit you read this person karl marx no so five thinkers six thinkers are very important just have a note of these things six thinkers karl marx emil durkheim max weber talcott parsons r k merton g h mead so this person is from germany this person is from germany two people from germany okay one from france and the remaining three from us that is a sociology is mostly in west it came from west to the east karl marx emil durkheim max weber talcott parsons r k merton g h mead six thinkers we will study in fact in the first karl marx durkheim and all we'll take almost 6 uh, 7 classes for one single thinker 6 7 classes will happen and whatever he said karl marx said is what is studied in this sixth unit so when you read karl marx in the fourth chapter you are reading sixth chapter as well this is another important aspect of sociology you study in one place you study the chapter which is present in another place alongside so when a student is studying karl marx he automatically prepares for 60 unit there is only one topic which uh, is a new topic uh, which will be basically coming in the paper also and that topic is this work and economic life formal and informal organization of work so what happens during the covid 19 times work is becoming more informal or not and there was a question asked in the 2020 paper about covid 19 and work then polity and society there is another topic seventh unit is what polity and society so when you study this topic your indian polity will get strengthened when i take polity for the gs students students will get a new dimension of indian polity because i add sociological content with the polity and that is what is the real understanding which everybody will have to have it is not not just memorizing what is the article for election commission what is the article for president's election no go deep understand the social background of indian polity 
so a student of sociology will understand polity at a, at a different level you'll, you'll you'll understand wait for the class to come politics and society right then in politics and society you'll study this bureaucracy democracy citizen nation protest all these things then eighth chapter is on religion and society sociological theories of religion fourth unit remember karl marx spoke about religion max weber spoke about religion emile durkheim spoke about religion so sociological theories of power also max weber spoke about power that is bureaucracy karl marx spoke about power parson spoke about power so whenever you have the first topic under every you know unit you are ultimately referring to the fourth unit which is why i told 80 percentage of the syllabus can be covered in one single unit called as fourth unit called as thinkers unit so religion this sect cult actually they have asked uh, in 2022 about uh, sect and cult in gs paper 1 it was a rude shock for many of the non sociology optional students they do not know what is sect and what is cult then secularism a very very favorite topic of upsc for gs paper 1 many times they have asked secularism repeatedly they are asking secularism secularism okay revivalism religion is getting revived today people are more religious than in the past agree or not do you agree or not most of the people who have applied for this year they applied during auspicious time yes or no auspicious time you are applying online but seeing auspicious time online is science auspicious time is religion religion and science three parents called me today told that they will bring their children tomorrow because of the auspicious day i told today class is going on they said auspicious time is tomorrow so religion and science very very important go and see the previous year question of sociology you will enjoy the paper actually previous year question paper is going to give you a trend this is where upsc is going i will also catch up with upsc if i go in that direction so best you know guideline for upsc preparation is previous year question paper in the test series i will give answer for all the previous year questions in the test series phase 1 i will give answer for previous year question in test series phase 2 i will give you the answer for current affairs based sociology questions so you thorough with previous questions you are thorough with the current affairs sociology based question either they can ask you this way or that way or a combination of both whatever may be the case you are fully prepared then the ninth unit is i told no why i selected sociology because of the term family family studying family is the ninth unit and 10th unit is social change how society is changing theories of social change where you will be taking points from fourth unit wherever you find the theories 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 paper 1 fourth unit in family you see contemporary trends this is a very important current affairs today we are discussing something called as the supreme court of india is discussing about what same sex marriages is it going to threaten the institution called a family yes or no same sex marriage is going to challenge the traditional concept of marriage what is traditional concept of marriage man marries a woman marriage is union between two opposite sex the marriage act 1954 they are bringing today it should be gender neutral why should man and women marry 
man and man can marry man women and women can marry like that today some talks are going on or not so this is contemporary trend and there was a previous year question asked live in relationship two three years back live in relationship was asked live in relationship how it is threatening the family today same sex marriage live in relationship there are some people who don't want to marry at all they wanted to stay single there are some people who are marrying but they don't want to have children they are called as double income no kid family both are working they don't want to have children in the scandinavian countries and all population growth has got reduced now government is giving incentive for people to give birth to children because negative population growth now we are very happy because we have surpassed china we are number 1 every sixth person you meet on the planet earth is an indian go to any place go to europe sixth first second third fourth fifth sixth. indian he is there we are one sixth of the humanity good or bad good or bad hmm? that is why we are asking for permanent membership in security council how can you ignore one sixth of the humanity first qualification that we demand a permanent membership in un security council is one sixth of the humanity see these are some of the things which are coming in the current affairs which can be fantastically explained using sociological perspective you'll enjoy you'll have so many points in fact when i your friends roommates and all are not having adequate points and you give we'll feel so excited when our friends are not knowing something and you know something it's like getting ias only even that ias will not give you that much happiness when you ask some four questions to your friend and he is not able to answer even single question you give answer for the four question he is out he will change the room <laughs> or in worst case he will quit this field and go work somewhere so this is what you have to enjoy the subject is going to give you so many perspectives which you are not knowing now knowledge is power dr abdul kalam says will realize so this is about how society is changing 10th unit so five um, paper one you have 10 units emergence of sociology sociology is a science or not research method how to study society thinkers portion social stratification work and economic life polity religion family social change finished finished now come to paper 2 application of what you have studied in paper 1 to indian society there are three sections a b c section a section b section 3 section c so three sections are there a is introducing indian society b is social structure and c is what social change b is social structure c is social change so three things i am going to study in paper 2 one is what introducing indian society two is what social structure three is what social change introducing indian society why should you introduce indian society because indian society studies new it has to come from where sociology came from where pa uh, europe 
so people used to some perspectives to study indian society perspective means what viewpoint it is your viewpoint how do you look at some people say use the textbook view to study indian society they are called as indologist use book textbooks are there ramayana mahabharata upanishad vedas manu manusmriti they are the textbook which gives you an idea about india use the book view it is called as indology don't use book view go to the field and study structure functionalism use marx fourth unit marx use marxian perspective what marx is telling you that using that framework study indian society marxian perspective so use book indology don't use book go to the field and study structure functionalism take a clue from karl marx use his theory to study india marxian perspective okay three thinkers are there gore shrinivas desai now secondly how british administration affected indian society because during british rule only we had this nationalism concept of nation came only during british period the concept of nation india and all did not come during the mughal period yes or no mughals ruled, ruled india after that british came but during the mughal rule did we have any understanding that we are all indians no but the british came and they stoked a sense of nationalism in us why what did not happen during the mughal period that happened during the british period why mughal did not exploit you mughals did not exploit you british did that exploitation they plundered us they plundered us so all were the victims of the british administration i speak tamil you speak telugu she speaks malayalam she speaks uh, hindi she speaks sanskrit all of us are similarly exploited by the british all of us came together in one voice we told the british will have to be boosted out and that is what is the sense of nationalism so you will study how during the british rule nationalism came how during british rule modernization also happened modernization means new things came the bureaucracy which you are wanting to enter into whose creation it is who created this competitive examination and all who created this upsc october 1st 1926 sir ross barker was appointed as the first chairman of the public service commission which later became upsc in the government of india act 1935 it was called as federal public service commission after independence federal public service commission became your upsc so we are following whose rules british rule most of the collectorates old uh, districts collectorates are british building collector houses today 50 acres 100 acres why because those people enjoyed life like anything and the result is you are also enjoying my friend was collector in kanpur gora goragpur he was doing agriculture in the bungalow that much space was there land agriculture land 100 acres so he started cultivating sugarcane on one hand he was collector and on another hand he was a farmer but deposited all the sugarcane money in the treasury income from government income from collector bungalow this many lakhs british building only british law only today whatever law you are speaking about our indian constitution 60 percentage came from government of india 1935 so during british time our tradition became modern protest and movements took place during british time farmers protested you know tribes protested okay then raja ramohan rai and other people came to modernize us all these things came during the british period so that is the impact of indian society impact of colonial rule on indian society when you go to the second portion called as social structure structure means what 
What do you mean by structure? Hmm? A set of relation is called a structure. This class can it be called as having a structure? Yes. Why? Because I am a teacher, you are a student, how I should talk to you, how you should talk to me. We have some do's and don'ts. Wherever do's and don'ts are there, there and all structure is there. You should do this thing, you should not do this thing. So, structure as of now, understand like this, do's and don'ts, which you cannot easily deviate. Okay. Under social structure, you study caste system, you study village, you study tribe, you study class system, you study kinship system and you study religion. So, six structures you are studying. What and all you are studying? One is village, two is caste, three is tribe. 4 is class, 5 is, 5 is religion, 6 is, 6 is what, 6 is what, kinship, family, okay. So, 6 structures, I repeat, village, caste, class, religion, family, then tribes. This if you study, then the second portion called as section B is over in paper 2. Now come to the third section called as section C. It is about social changes in India. How and all society changed? We wanted to change society through constitution. Yes or no? Why Dr. Ambedkar wrote constitution? To change Indian society. New India was written in the constitution by Dr. Ambedkar. So, he is one of the architects of modern India. He thought that through my constitution, I can change the society. Through education, you can change the society or not. You can give education to the people and society will change because education changes your mindset. When your mindset changes, your society also changes. And there are some rural development programs through which you wanted to change the society. For example, community development program, poverty alleviation program. Green revolution we introduced to change the society. Land reforms we introduced to change the society. Right? So, we are changing the society through industrialization. We are changing the society through urbanization. We are changing the society through population policies. Look at this. Through industry, we wanted to change society. Through urbanization, we wanted to change society. Through politics, we wanted to change society. How through politics? Democracy. Through democracy, you wanted to change society or not? Similarly, through movements you wanted to change society. Farmers wanted to change society. Farmers movement happened in a very big way even during the corona time or not against three farm laws. Farmers all over India, they protested in New Delhi. Okay. So, farmers movement, women's movement. There was a question asked two, three years back. Me too movement. What do you mean by me too? Women when they were not that so popular, when they were very, very ordinary people, they were exploited sexually. So, they can't speak it out because nobody will take it very seriously. They are very normal people, very common people. Nobody will take very seriously. Once they become celebrity, whatever they say, people will listen. So, they speak about the past sexual abuse they encounter. This is a movement. How? Earlier, they were silently accepting the sexual exploitation. Today, they are not ready to accept. They will openly go to the court of law 
they will write articles, they will stage a protest demanding action against the culprit. Is this not a change? Women are coming for civil services examination more than in the past. 2022 result, all India rank 1, all India rank 2, all India rank 3. All the three toppers are women toppers. Ruti Sharma, then Ankita Agarwal, Gamini Singla. So, kitchen is not my place where I will live. I will go to become collector. I will become SP. I will become Kiran Bedi. Women movement today, women are refusing to accept the old roles. Modern women are not ready to accept the old roles. Modern women wanted allocation of roles equally between men and women. If husband is doing breakfast, I will make dinner. What about lunch we will have in the company? Earlier, women cannot go out and work for money. Today, women can go out and work. They have their own bank account. They have their own wallet. They have their own ATM cards. They are not economically dependent on men. So, this is women movement today happening, especially in TNPSC and all, out of uh, how much, uh, 66 selection, 57 selection women, yes or no, group 1. So, now it is time for men's movement against at least provincial service commissions. Backward class movement, Dalit movement, environmental movement, identity based movement. Identity means what? What is identity? Tell me what is identity? See, I identify myself based on my religion, my caste, my region. Okay. So, there are many markers of identity. They are called as identity markers. You belong to this group. You belong to that group. You belong to this place. You belong to this linguistic community. You belong to this religious community. You belong to this caste community. Like that people have different identities or not. Using their identity, they are demanding their share in the development today. They are demanding their share in the development. For example, Marathas demanded reservation. Jats demanded reservation, but Supreme Court told, you are not, you were not victim of untouchability in the past. To demand reservation, you should be socially backward. Yes or no? Social backwardness should be based on whether you are a victim of past untouchability. You are a dominant caste. So, Supreme Court cancelled the reservation given to uh, Marathas and uh, Jats in the past. Okay. But uh, today, democracy is giving uh, an option to you to use your identity and ask from the government. See, our community has 10 percentage of votes. Give me this or that. Otherwise, next election, you see, I will not vote. My people will not vote. So, government will call your leader. Come, come, come. We will talk. What do you wanted? We wanted this thing, we wanted that thing. Okay, okay, you take it, take it. Reservation you wanted, you take it. Anyhow, you will go to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court, they will cancel the reservation. Government knows. Government knows all these things. That whatever reservation we are giving is only temporary because it will be struck down by Supreme Court. As you are pressurizing us because of political pressure, we are giving reservation and definitely it will be declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, go and see in the court. So, that is how people demand today, I belong to this, I belong to that, give me this thing, give me that thing. Tribals are protesting today or not. They are the original inhabitants of this country. 
India came before 75 years. They came before 5000 years. It is their land. And suddenly you told this is India. They are not totally uh, aware of this Mahatma Gandhi and all. For you, he is father of the nation. For tribal people, they are not knowing who this Mahatma is. For them, Birsa Munda is a great leader, not Mahatma Gandhi. But you tell them, get lost from this place because this is government land. You are shell shocked. Where I will go? You go to some other place, we will give you rehabilitation. But no rehabilitation done. They are victims. Development for you, displacement for them. Will they leave you? They will not leave you. And therefore, tribes are protesting today, which can be an example of identity movements. Right. And seventhly, population. Population. Very, very important to study social change, how population is changing. Here only we will study birth rate, death rate, okay, population policy, infant mortality, all these things we will study in demography. This normally people study in geography, but from sociological dimension we will study population because size of the population is not dependent on the government, rather it is dependent on the culture. India was one of the first country to have a national population policy in 1950. But we could not control population. We were one of the first few countries to have a national level population policy since 1950s. Because the first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, found that this is an extra luggage. This is an extra luggage. Because most of the people are below poverty line. More number of people adding more and more increasing fertility is not going to help us. So, we have to trim down our population, reduce the number of population. Therefore, he was starting this first population policy, nationally, you know, uh, uh, formulated a population policy. One of the few countries in the world, population could not be controlled. Today, we have overtaken China. Why population could not be controlled in India? Sociologists were employed to study. Why? We go tell people they are not uh, doing what they are what we are telling. So we forcefully took people and uh, did a family planning to them. Forceful family planning. They did not even leave 80 year old man. Still population is not reducing. It is said that more the number of children means more God is blessing you. God is showering blessings through number of children. More children means more blessings. In Islam also. So culture says produce more children. Government says produce less children. When there is a fight between culture and government culture will prevail. So, what should we do? Government is asking sociologists. Sociologists told. So, go to people, convince them about the importance of small family. So, door to door, government officers went, convinced people to reproduce less. And therefore, our fertility rate has re relatively reduced. But in total number, we have surpassed. That is a different story. Fertility is not decided by the husband and wife. How many children? Husband and wife will not decide. The family will not decide. The culture will decide. That is why it will be very surprising to know that the average number of children born to a woman in America is 2. The average number of children born to an Indian woman is 3. The average number of children born to a woman in Yemen is 6. How can there be constancy in the number of children if it is a decision of the individual. Average number of children will not be same for all women in Niger, all women in Yemen, all women in India or America. So, this is the importance of culture on family. 
culture on population and this has to be studied therefore this is a very very important topic you can expect the question because of china been overtaken by india recently challenges change always comes with challenges people always resist change from tomorrow onwards you have to wake up by 5 o'clock now you are waking up by 8 o'clock in the morning from tomorrow onwards you have to wake up by morning 5 o'clock difficult or easy very difficult always understand that change comes with challenges what are the challenges india wanted to change no doubt we have to change but when change we are trying for it will be having so many challenges see challenges displacement in the name of development you are displacing the tribal people and poverty increases inequality increases today people are becoming poor india is rich but indians are poor is this not a paradox india is rich indians are poor even today starvation deaths are happening but we say we are the fifth we are the second largest standing army we are the third largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity all these things we are telling why then indian should die due to starvation why then maximum number of children are suffering from malnutrition anemia children especially girl children 60 percentage of girl children are anemic today so you have lot many things to work upon to improvise upon caste conflicts increasing number of caste conflicts religious conflicts communal conflicts right uh, some time back the driver who was driving the vehicle carrying the uh, you know um, cow for slaughter he was killed by the gaurakshas today what food you should eat what should food you should not eat decided by some caste conflicts communal conflicts violence against women according to national crime record bureau data women are sexually assaulted more today than in the past according to national crime record bureau data delhi is not just the capital of india it is the rape capital of india data says in two years time the number of rapes tripled in delhi why some problem change is not acceptable to few people and change provides opportunity for women to go to jobs come out of their house go to jobs earn money and this is seen as a threat to some men who feel that they are losing out in the competition to the women so they have to scare women they have to cause fear in the minds of women if you come out of the house then it, there is no guarantee for your life like that there is a fear psychosis which has been created in the minds of women who are wanting to improve their life by whom by some men who are the victims of development frustration comes because they are losing out and women today the most most pathetic story is that women are the soft targets today because culture is telling even when women are sexually assaulted they should not come out and tell in the public place so whatever change has happened negatively it is affecting women because increasing violence against women is a case in point to be noted today all these are problems which comes today after india has experienced changes so sociology in totality you see that it is a composite package a very nicely constructed package it, it gives you everything or not it gives you everything it's a it's a so nice composite package which contains almost all the subjects economics fifth unit or sixth unit 
Indian polity, seventh unit. Okay, then social justice, this uh, problems. Then uh, development related issues, which is there in paper two governance, this is there. And uh, environment, it is there. Philosophy, it is there. Ethics. So that is why. A student of sociology can easily capture what is happening today with the help of the sociological perspectives. I have given the briefing of the syllabus. I have not gone deep into the syllabus. Each and every word in the syllabus, if I have to teach, then it will take much of your time. And three, four classes it will consume to just decode your syllabus. I have just given a, a briefing of what is that thing which you are going to study in the future. So, the first part of the lecture I have given for how you should select optional based on certain criterions. The second part of the lecture I have given for the syllabus of sociology in brief. The third short part of the lecture today is that what I am having as a plan for you. What is that thing I have planned to do to you so that you will be able to cross this 320 plus. 320 plus you fix today. Today you have to fix what you have to get. It is not like I uh, will study something, I will get something. So, see, in this life, in this life, especially in the current times, something you do, you will not get something. You, I do something, I will not get something. In fact, if I do something, I get nothing. There are some people who are, who will do nothing but wanted something. There are some people who will do nothing but wanted something. There are few other people who think uh, something I do, I will get something. The competition is so heavy that if you do everything, you will get something. You do everything, you get something. We are not trying for uh, the 500th rank, 1000th rank, 1105, that is the last rank, I think, 1105, that rank I am trying. Try top 10 ranks. How many of you have uh, at least imagined that, at least had a dream of getting top 10 ranks? Truly speaking, you tell me, how many? Not most of us. Not most of us. Because... We even fear to dream. We even fear to have a high target. And that is the problem which most of us have. We have a low self-esteem. We think that oh, service, some service. We are not beggars, we are choosers. We are choosers. You should choose. For choosing, you have to fix the target. This is my target. 320 I should get in sociology. If I get 320 in sociology, if I manage some 400 in GS, if I manage 130 in SA, if I manage some 160 in interview, I will be in top 10. I just require 45 percentage in GS. I just require some 60 percentage in SA. I will require 320 in sociology. I will get around 150, 160 to 170 in interview. 170 in interview is very practical. You will get one of the topmost ranks. Try. So, the power of visualization is much more important. You should be able to imagine. Homo sapiens excelled because of their power of imagination. It was a cognitive revolution which happened 70,000 years before. Our mind started evolving 70,000 years back. 
after 70000 years of evolution how bright our mind should be it's not one year two years 70000 years our brain was evolving today we are standing with one of the finest brains in the living species on the planet earth because of this mind level revolution and the product of that mind level, level revolution is we can imagine what is not present we can imagine what is not present what is not present as of now rank one is not present as of now is is not present as of now imagine write your name on your notebook after that i a s now see yeah Electroconvulsive wave will start from the top of the head. It will travel through the whole body and you can experience at the bottom of your feet. That is what is the thing which I am suggesting you. Dream big. 